Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Royce, and welcome back to A Drink With Crazy. I am back with the weekly coffee stream, and I have my weekly coffee here. I have your comments up there, and I have a small request from my heart to you. That was a little gay, but regardless, will you guys watch and share the Shadow Binders Volume 1 Chapter 1 video that I did? I'm very, very proud of that video, and that's a very good example for the comic series stuff that I'm going to be doing for the for Isom when it comes out, when Eric July uh, gets it to us, which I think he's actually starting fulfillment um, this month. So, and outside of that, subscribe to the channel, share the channel with your friends, and uh, don't forget to like the videos, because that really helps the YouTube algorithm. So, without any further ado, let's get into reading your comments. All right, Mainframe Online Gaming TV says, yo. And that was a really short one, so I responded asking how he was. He said he was good, and he loved the channel and the Ripperverse content. Uh, Ram says, Royce, damn, I missed the premiere. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, first the 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 notifications are not going out for the channel and I'm not sure why. Um and this is also uh reading your comments number 6. I think I forgot to say that. Sorry. I had already started recording this video and then the children were like talking and I was like, "But guys, I'm doing a video." So, children be children. Uh Billy Bobsack, I'm a prequel lover even before Disney destroyed Star Wars. Yeah, I am too actually. Um I didn't actually know that people hated the prequels until I was like 23, 24, something like that. I didn't know that there was like this massive hate for the prequels because I just I I mean I grew up with the prequels. I I loved them and people were like, "No, like the original ones are way better." And I'm like, "Um I don't know about that. Like, I mean, Star Wars has always been pretty good, but yeah, I've always been a prequel, a prequel lover like myself. I don't understand the, the, I, I genuinely don't, I have never understood the hate. Like when I learned about it again, I was 20 something years old. So 13 years of having the prequels or something like that. And yeah, I was like, I, I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand why you people don't like these movies. Like, there's nothing really wrong. With it. Uh, Phantom Menace suffers from editing, and it was a poor story choice in uh, Clone Wars, but or Attack of the Clones. Sorry. Uh, Billy Bob Sack also back again. Also, does Gilded have an app on the phone? Yes, uh, Gilded, which is a link in the description below, is my server where you guys can go and talk with the community here on a drink with crazy. Um, and yes, it does have an app on the phone, and it works quite well. And it actually saved our butts uh, on the uh, um, uh, computer app um, when we were live streaming on Friday. So yeah, go join my Gilded server. It is linked in the description below. Uh, Ran, and dude, that's awesome that your wife got you the cards. Fuck yeah, I'm definitely uh, gonna read the first uh, book before opening the cards. Don't want to get the characters' powers and info spoiled. Um, are you going to do an unboxing video when you get your items? Yes, I will be doing an unboxing video when I get my Ripaverse items. I am wondering whether or not I will do a live stream or just a video. I think I'll probably do a video. Um, but yes, I will be doing an unboxing videos when I get my ISOM items. Thank you, Ram. Uh, Sassy77, thanks for reading my comment. Yes, I was born in 1977. However... Clownfish TV uh, commenting beats at all. That's right. Last week, uh, Clownfish TV commented on the channel. That was cool. Congratulations on that. Uh, wife buying you Ripperverse and Shadow Binders is awesome. She's a keeper for sure. Uh, when we uh, first hanging out, Hubby was taking his younger brother to comic book stores to help his collection. Uh, he bought me a couple of Kiss comics, the early 2000s run. Uh, he knew Kiss, Metal Music, and Star Wars was the way to my heart. Today, he brings home random uh, Grogu items, even though uh, we hate giving any money to Disney, lol. He does bring me random Star Wars stuff from the flea markets uh, because I'm obsessed with the Millennium Falcon, lol. Uh, he is in and out of different things, so it's hard for me to find um, what to binge buy for him. Yes, yeah, so sassy that... I, I love when people share that stuff with me. It just sounds like you guys have an awesome relationship and a relationship that I hope to, you know, keep with my wife. You know, I mean, be 12 years, it'll be almost 12 years in about two weeks. We're getting there. All right, moving on to 
uh, unboxing of the Shadow Binders comics from Clownfish TV. Yep. All right. So yeah, unboxing these here. He goes, Agent of Zalem. Uh, I'm planning on ordering these, but waiting for my next paycheck. Well, I would suggest that you do order them. I actually finished volume two yesterday. I am very glad that Clownfish TV is actually going back. So they've got their Crimson Wren that is almost done. They've got a couple of pages that just need to be, um, uh, I think, inked and lettered. I think is what they said on their video yesterday. So for Crimson Wren. And then they're going to be continuing the Shadowbinder story, uh, story arc, which they need to because it... Volume 2 doesn't end on a cliffhanger, but I understand, like, they've talked about the literal hell that it was for them to put Shadow Binders together and how it was just this labor of love. And so I want to support them because I want, I, I've read Volume 1 and Volume 2, now I need Volume 3. So, um, <clears throat> so Fopeezy comes in and Fopeezy, he just joined the Gilded server too. You guys should seriously join the Gilded server. It's, it's epic over there. There's all kinds of degeneracy. Well, I, I keep most of the degeneracy down. I tell people, you know, we're, I only allow so much degeneracy. Uh, but Fopeezy is here, and he says, Dope, this is what we need. Um, <laughs> um, and yeah, this is obviously on the unboxing video for, you know, the, the comics, for indie comics. I That's what this... If we want... Eric July and Clownfish and Razor Fist and Jason De La Rose and all these people to be seen in the same light as the big guys, we have to cover them as fans like the big guys, right? If we want them to get big enough to where people... because And that's the shit part about like being fans is eventually even that will be taken over by a new SJW in 20 years and then we're going to go, what the hell happened to the Ripperverse, right? Like, it's it's... Well, probably not 20 years, hopefully 70 to 80, but... You know, we want this stuff to grow so we can share it with more people. Uh, CW says box, question mark, question mark, question mark. He's the only one that did a what's in the box. I asked everybody on that video of unboxing the Clownfish TV Shadowbinders Volume 1 and 2. I was like, you better have a what's in the box joke. If I don't see a what's in the box joke, you, you, you guys you guys are failing. And CW is the only one who did a what's in the box joke. I was serious about that. <laughs> uh, Kyle Phillips, also in the Gilded, says that's a nice color palette. I actually use one uh, for a novel I'm currently neglecting to write. Uh, I'm using electrical wiring colors, uh, 120 volt and 220, uh, 277 volt, and uh, city textures and sticking to uh, the scheme for world objects and clothing. I'm aiming to make a beautifully painted but intentionally stupid story. I think that that would be an interesting concept. I think most people can accept when there's like stupid art with a great story. I don't know if people can accept amazing art with a stupid story. Um... It's kind of like YouTube videos like this one that have absolute crap freaking video, right? But as long as the audio is somewhat serviceable, right? It, like on the better side of like mediocre, people will tolerate it all day long. But if you have amazing video but really bad audio quality, people nope out, right? So that's kind of that thing that I you might run into, Kyle. Uh, Billy Bob Sack. Gangster man coming for that as Friday night. Oh God. Yeah. Billy Bob sack plays Friday night Brawlhalla with us. And he, uh, uses the gangster man on, on Friday or on, yeah, on, on Brawlhalla and oh boy. Oh boy. That's he's yeah. He, he's getting really, really competitive with that game. <laughs> uh, Pelzor, uh, you have to do one of these for ISOM number one. I will be doing an unboxing video for ISOM number one when I get it. Um, that is a thing. Uh, yeah, I mean, Isom is kind of, Isom and the Eric July Ripperverse is what blew the channel up, so. Um, and, you know, it, it's been a, a struggle to kind of, like, get away from his videos, because I don't only want to cover Isom, I do want to cover other stuff, which I am, but it does suck, because, like, if I'm not doing Isom stuff, or, like, Lord of the Rings stuff, like, the channel doesn't get a lot of viewership. 
which I mean, understandable, right? Like if I'm covering things that people don't care about, I'm that's, I think that's why just everybody should, you know, subscribe to the channel if you are checking it out and then come back and just check on the channel every day. I upload a video every night around like 7 p.m., 8 p.m. Central, usually, except for the weekends. Weekends, I usually upload a little earlier. But, yeah, just come and check it out every evening and see what the channel's uploaded every day. And just watch. Just be here and hang out and see the, the stuff that I'm covering. So, um, uh, Billy Bobsack, how do the hardcovers in the paper feel? Actually, they feel fantastic. One second. Um, I'm going to rip everything out. So I have volume one right here because I was scanning everything in, but that is something I did forget to talk about. But no, this paper feels fantastic. This is really good, qu thick quality. I mean, it's very glossy paper, right? Um, really, really good quality paper. Um, uh, I did not talk about that in the unboxing, but it's just that, I mean, I mean, it's really, really I, I like this. You can definitely tell it's not cheap. I also like the hardcover, too. Um, oh, God. I'm going to knock Andrew off. Mm, yeah, the wall is, like, right there. Right there. Um, I like that it's a hardcover because if it's a hardcover, and for some reason one of our doggos gets to it, I have at least a little bit more time before it's completely destroyed and not readable anymore. <laughs> like, that's that's a legit thing. All right. Um, Abby, um, I got these last year. The quality is awesome. I love the feel of the cover of the cover and the pages. I'll admit I haven't read them yet. Life has been busy, but the quality alone made me order the Crimson Ren um, volume that they just finished. I can't wait to get it. I finally have reading time in October, so I'll probably read them. Well, Abby, thank you so much for commenting on the video, and uh, she and I had a short exchange there, and hopefully she does get some time to read these, and um, after she reads them, I really hope that, Abby, you would check out and see um, you know, my, my Shadowbinder series that I'm doing to see if I'm doing it justice. Cause if you guys have read this, that's what would be really cool is to share the story with people who've read it and to, uh, go through the story with people who haven't or don't have the ability to get them. Cause they're pricey books. They sell them as a two pack for $50 a piece. So $25 a book, which is not bad at all, you know, but it's definitely not your, you know, $5 comic book, which is fine. I have no issues with that, you know, but I just understand that like, you know, money's getting tighter for a lot of people, and it's getting difficult to, to, to be able to do some of this stuff, you know? Oh. But thank you so much for commenting, Abby. I appreciate it. Scott Freeman, you had me when you said I don't want to do Marvel and DC stuff. Well, Scott Freeman, hello. How are you? <laughs> but no, thank you so much for being here. I am so glad. Um... That I, I'm so glad that people are enjoying what I'm doing. Um, yeah, that was. Uh, oh boy, it's a very surprising to see the amount of people that are showing up to this channel. It's it really is. Um, yeah. So oh, and something that happened this last week. So Clownfish TV destroys the mainstream media and comic books, right? Um, that was a video that I did last, um, before, it was the last video before reading your comments number six. Clownfish TV shared that on, like, Sunday night, Monday morning, so when I got up to go to work, that video was blowing up, and I couldn't figure, I was like, what the hell is going on here? Like, I don't understand why we're getting new subscribers, why people are coming in, like, I was like, something is broken here, and I don't know what's happening. And it wasn't until I got to work. It was like, I was at work. It was like 6.30. And I'm just like scrolling through. And I'm like, like what's going on? And I, I, well, and I'm more so, I'm trying to find something to listen to while I'm doing paperwork. And I scroll down and I kind of catch this, a drink with crazy, like clownfish TV. I was like, wait a minute, something, that, that was weird. My name doesn't pop up over here, you know? And so I scroll, because I'm on my main account, right? And it's like clownfish TV shared the video and was like, thank you so much for the kind words and the shout out. And I'm like, you guys have 275,000 subscribers. Like my little tiny channel saying good things about yours is like less of a shout out. I guess it could be considered a shout out, but yeah. So that has happened since the last reading your comments video. And it like, it just sent me through a whirlwind the next few days. I was like, I don't even know how to handle this. 
That was crazy. Um, all right, who is uh, uh, Duke Dukemon or however the hell uh, Eric July says it? Like I still can't figure out how to say this damn character's name. Um, who is Dukemon? This is a Ripperverse Theory video. Agent of Zalem. I personally don't think making shorts really suits the type of channel you're creating. Uh, if you did do shorts, you'd be tapping into a different type of audience, and by focusing uh, on one and only aspect of your videos and shorts, that's all some viewers are going to see. Yeah, YouTube wants me to do shorts to grow my channel. That's what they want everybody to do, and I and I just I don't like shorts. I don't like TikTok style videos. I never have. I think they're dumb. I really do. I think some people can do very well with them. I don't. I like long form conversations. I like to sit down and talk. It's why I'm not. It's why I suck on Twitter. Like I don't like Twitter. From most people that I understand that are like have big followings, like on like, on our side of the aisle, Twitter, they're like, no, Twitter's for dunking on people. That's all Twitter's for is dunk. I don't dunk on people. I sit down, I talk with them, I come at them with an honest conversation. It's why, yeah. So yeah. All right, uh, Kyle Phillips uh, about the Dokemon video says. Dokemon, I choose you. Use Body Slam. Dokemon uses Body Slam. Body Slam is super effective. Um, I told Kyle Phillips that he was a Mega Digimon. Because he's totally a fucking Mega Digimon. Right? He's not a fucking Pokemon. Digimon are better than Pokemon. Anyway, Ram, I like the theory um, that we're being presented that Dokemon is a villain, but maybe he's actually a good guy. Another thing I'm intrigued by is Altona. I'm wondering if there's a reason that Eric chose to name her company Projexis. Uh, instead of just saying that she uh, interned at her company, uh, my question was what is what is their goal their mission their objective do they do experiments on excepts did she have uh did she have anything oh god guys i am tired i don't have enough coffee for this yet did she have to do anything with it okay did she ram no your sentence structure here sucks he is also in the gilded okay did she have anything to do with not did she to do anything with the disappearance yes did she had to do anything? Yeah. Okay. Y you flipped your words. So did she have anything to do with the disappearance of the intern and uh, she could be setting up her brother, Avery, a.k.a. Isom? Uh, could it be that Darren Fontano is working with Altona, but maybe Altona has no other choice? Maybe I'm looking into it too much. So that's an interesting fan theory here. Um, and I... <sighs> I don't think that's something that would be explored in the first book um, as to whether or not Altona is uh, whether against her own will or of her own volition uh, working in a duplicitous way against her brother. I'm not sure if they would be able to have enough pages to fit something like that. And not only that, that's not something you just want to mic drop on people. That's your slow burn, right? That's your... That's your secretly building up and doing building connections and threads for you know several um, several years. Uh, that's what yeah, that's what that is. I um, as far as the company name being dropped, I don't I don't know if he's using everything as a bait, right? I think that there are things that you know. You, you have to, like... Because not everything is meant to be theorized about, right? Uh, and the company name of Projexus being dropped could just be like, Hey, works at this company. Here's the company's name. Um, for the purposes of adding a little bit more of a grounded feel to the world, right? He's got this whole universe. He's got this universe Bible that he's got to follow. So I don't know if the name has anything to do with it. As far as Altona working with... Um, Darren Fontano, I mean, if they all grew up together in the same area, I would not rule that out. I don't know if we would see that in Isom number one. I could be totally wrong. That feels like something that's a slow burn and a slow build. And you don't just mic drop that in your first issue, so. Faux Peasy says, sup. Sup, Faux Peasy. Also, Faux Peasy is on the Gilded server. I think I said that earlier. Uh, Xavier Guzman. Um, 
I have it from reliable, 100% totally factual source that Dokumon is actually Omer Fudd who accepts a position as an interpreter but can't actually speak the native language. So he was killed off by his bosses and, uh, and had to choose between uh, everyone's childhood wish of returning to life as a dog or the Grim Reaper looking guy. So he chose that. <laughs> so Dokumon is Elmer Fudd come back from the dead. <laughs> Thank you, Xavier Guzman. Uh, Yosaru, uh, I like, uh, I like, enjoy, I, I like and enjoy, uh, your content largely for your enthusiasm. This, vi um, this video, your sound levels spiked a bit much, which made it, um, so I could not, uh, use earbuds. Uh, keep it up. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, I think I hit the wrong, uh, compression. I, I was like, no, no, let's do a little. Yeah, yeah, I, I think I hit the wrong, uh, compression in post. One of these days, uh, and it's really expensive to do this, but my goal is to actually go out and buy um, analog uh, analog noise gate, analog compressor, um, analog EQ, um, and like analog reverb, and have all that over here, run into that, and then run all that out into here, and then go into the computer, because I absolutely, if you've ever worked with sound, and it's why, like, <clears throat> these SM57s here, um, I didn't have the money when I started doing this, and I still don't, to go out and buy new, but this is all old band equipment, right? Um, these XLR cables, these are the Livewire gold, you know, uh, golds, these are, I think this is my 10-footer, but, uh, this, I mean, th these aren't exact, these aren't, super cheap bottom of the barrel cable. They're not the most expensive out there, but the they're the live wire um they're the live wire like gold or something like that or oh these are the live wire advantage. Um my gold tips are somewhere at, where's my good XLR? Anyway, I digress. Um but no um having but you know SM57 here this is a hundred dollar microphone. Um this is a I want to say this is a sixty or seventy dollar uh cable um so that's going to be better audio quality than just, you know, a microphone and cable run together. Um, I've got USB soundboard down here, which I actually need to get a new one because this one's been literally dragged across my living room before. And it's just it's breaking. So because I had it in a different place. Um, so the reason that I would like to get all that stuff going back to why my you know, why I was clipping and why you guys were it was hard for, to listen into headphones is because the better that your sound is before it gets to your final product, right? The earlier you can make your sound better, the better overall audio quality you're going to have. It's why I struggle with a lot of the audio quality stuff here is because I would like, I uh, truthfully, if I just had a, I, I wouldn't even have to have all of that. If I could just have a nice EQ board uh, and get everything EQ'd the way that I need it to be with compression, with reverb, with, you know, my, my, uh, my trebles, my mids and my bass tones of my voice, exactly how I want them set. Um, and even have, you know, a gate, a noise gate, you know, pra and then obviously I need to get some sound foam here to block the sounds of the house. If I could get all that stuff going, you guys would just get a better overall quality product on the end. And I would hate the sound of my own voice a little less. So, but anyway, yeah, so that's the plans. Like I, that is the plan to do a better job for you guys. I know that's a little bit of a tangent just because, Hey, you know, it, it was a little bit much on the ears. I don't want that to happen again. I want you guys to have a good, not only that, if I do that, I won't have to do sound editing at all. I will record, it will go in, it will be exactly as I want it to be, and done. I may have to do a compression if I add music and stuff to the videos, but that's that's a different story, so. All right, Giovanni, Giovanni Tuminia. Hope Ripple won't go full Thanos with this. Yeah, I don't. I, I mean, yeah, you should never go full Thanos. But um, uh, I, I don't think he'll go full Thanos with that guy. I think the Dokumon is much more of a collector of some sort. That's why he tied him in with the cards. Um, Resistance Publishing. Uh, Dokumon looks like an old evil god. I think he possess, uh, poses a threat, and the superheroes on Earth got earth caught his attention i don't know if that guy is that level resistance i really i mean it is i mean everything is possible right now you know i mean right now we're looking at schrodinger's isom 
you know? <laughs> like, everything is possible inside Isom right now until we get the book and we open it up. And that quantum reality then collapses down into, you know, normal reality. But, um, anyway, that's a whole different... Anyway, um, it, looking into quantum is really fun. But um, I don't think he's an old evil god. I think he's an old being. I don't... I think he's a collector of some sorts. I, I'm just... That's just my gut feeling, right? Why tie him into the cards? Why tie him in? Cards are specifically for collectors. Why do that? Why have the cards? He is a collector of some sort. He is a gatherer. He wants... He says they look interesting. And he's just gonna watch it like... I don't know. I just... His... I, I get it. Like, his, his whole demeanor is screams evil god but i'm like why tie it to the cards that's something i feel that eric did very intentionally there are some things i think that eric's just throwing out there like oh if they theorize about this it don't matter because like the projectus name right i don't think the projectus name for that company matters i do however think him tying this character to the cards matters the, the specific colors for isom's suit I don't think that the colors necessarily matter. Not saying that there's not a story behind it, but I don't think they matter to the greater whole of the story, right? Um, <clears throat> the Alpha Core being in green, I think theirs fucking matters, right? I don't, and I think him, I think this Dokumon guy being tied to the cards matters. Um, I don't know if he's an old god. I don't, I and I don't, and the reason I say that is because I, I don't, see Eric doing a scale like that yet. I'm not saying he won't. I'm just saying yet. But you guys are challenging me on it because it's a really good theory resistance. All right, Ripperverse news, reviews, and theories. I covered this in my Death in the Ripperverse video. Great job. Thank you so much, Ripperverse news, reviews, and theories. Go, subscribe. Shoot. Well, no, stay here. Stay here. Stay here. Don't leave. Don't leave. Leave the video up. Click on their channel very intentionally. My video will still play. You subscribe to them. And then when you guys are done watching this video, you go over and you watch their videos. And that's how you do it. Um, Darville Hayes. Playing into the collector theory, pronunci uh, theory pronunciation of a Dokemon could be more like the... Um, more in the like of document, meaning uh, he's a chronicler of sorts. Yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, Dokemon could be like the, a documenter, a chronicler. Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, I think... I, yeah, I just, I, I, that's where I'm at, man. So thank you so much, Darville Hayes, uh, for commenting. All right, moving on. Timcast only ever wanted reaction culture building. Um, yeah, this song was interesting. It was very strange. Kyle Phillips comes in, does a lyrics drop, bounces. He just drops the lyrics. So if you guys want to know the lyrics of that song, Kyle Phillips went in and did that. Uh, Dead End 49.91. Yeah, like I mentioned before, I thought it was really boring. Um, the first three quarters of that song was boring. They got the, the drummer from The Offspring because he got kicked out of The Offspring because... Um, of, uh, because of all the, the jabby jab madness that people were going through. Um, and I'm like, you have the drummer of the offspring and he gets literally the last like 30 seconds of the song to actually be the drummer from the offspring. Like that, uh, that hit me after the fact. Cause I was like, Oh yeah. And I was like, you literally had the drummer from the offspring and you gave him the one song that he couldn't drum to. I don't know. I don't know. It's okay. It's okay. It's not a bad song. It's well put together. Um, I There are changes to it that I would have done if I were to write a song like that. And then th that being said, if I, I, so I wouldn't write a song like that because I would change what, so yeah. So um, I just, I wouldn't write a song like that because I think about things a little bit differently. Um, I've shown off some of my music in the Gilded server. In the Gilded server. Do it. Do that thing. Um, Corey Sanford. I'm a Tim fan, but I can't get into this. Uh, but to be honest, most music after 2013 has been pretty bad. Yeah. I don't disagree. Uh, there might be a tune or two here and there that comes out. 
and I'm like, hey, this is cool. Um, but yeah, I, man, like rock got too depressing. Uh, and I always miss my keg of rock. Like I, I'm one of those people that like Nickelback, right? And a lot of people give me crap for that. How do you like Nickelback? That well, yeah, because I've listened to all of their albums, and I can tell you that they literally played a wide, they play a wide variety of different music, right? Um, and even some of their stuff after it was like their 2015 album or something like that. It just uh, Feed the Machine wasn't bad. Feed the Machine had some killer freaking heavy metal tunes on Feed the Machine. Um, because their album before that, they went so light and so pop rock with it. That was like, eh. so I think there was, uh, but those guys are always willing to experiment with stuff, which is really cool. And honestly, the metal, the metal theme fits Nickelback really well, but yeah, there's just, I mean, I liked my, I really liked the rock and roll of the two thousands. Um, I felt that the rock and roll of the two thousands with bands like, uh, three doors down, uh, Nickelback, Hinder, uh, Buck Cherry, um, like all those guys was, Oh, and the theory of a dead man is in there too. I really felt like that was like the continuation of what like eighties hair metal, like was turning, you know? Um, I felt like that was that continuation of eighties rock and roll because we took a break for like a decade to, to do the grunge thing. Cause America needed to do the grunge thing. And then we came back to rock and roll and started really getting popular there. And I really feel like bands like that were the continuation of that. And I miss that kind of rock and roll. And then we started getting away from it and we started going into this emo rock. Like everybody has to sing about how their life sucks and nobody understands them and they're depressing and they have monsters inside of them. And I'm like, I don't, can we talk about having a beer and having a good time? Because I've never let myself fall into that cultural depression. I'm not saying I haven't had moments in my life where I probably had some depression. I know I had panic attacks there for a while because I went through some serious shit, but yeah, rock and roll, rock and roll nowadays is just not what it used to be. And I wish it would go back. That'd be great. All right, not my real name. See what you did there. Oh, and not my real name. He just joined the Gilded server a day ago, too. I'm going to highlight all my Gilded people. So for you not Gilded people, you've got to be in the Gilded. <laughs> um, not my real name. Uh, gives me Breaking Benjamin slash Star Wars vibes. That's a weird combination. Highly derivative, but polished enough to feel special and unique. My favorite part is that Tim isn't acting butthurt about the critics, and he acknowledges that uh, he's getting activist support. Yeah. Uh, we need more people doing things because they can without uh, direct corporate input, uh, loyal only to their own messaging. No, absolutely. And that's why this is good that Tim Tim is doing this. Might not be your cup of tea on this song, but he's doing it, right? It's like Isom. Some people may read it and go, God, not, mm -mm, not my cup of tea. But at least it's getting done. And that's important because somebody will go, this is my cup of tea. And that will start to build the subcultures. So that's hugely important. All right, moving on to John Della Rose's helping my channel. I decided, yeah, I named it that way uh, to be somewhat clickbaity, uh, but it is true. I still actually have to read his um, his uh, graphic novel that I have downloaded, um, which that one will be a lot easier to do because, well, I will just literally be able to screenshot it. So. All right, scrolling down to the bottom, Agent of Salem. Uh, I'm going to be honest, I've never heard of John Della Rose, but I'd love to see what he brings to the table with his comics. Uh, Billy Bobsack, I swear we won't hurt you in the Gilded server. Maybe. See? Billy Bobsack knows. He knows the Gilded server. Corey Sanford, JDA is a great YouTuber and writer. So yeah, there's, uh, yeah. Uh, Giovanni Tuminia, I've read several works by JDA, both comic books and novels, and the guy is a fantastic writer. Overmind has all the tools to be groundbreaking franchise, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, but it introduces story and characters that we really uh, don't see in the mainstream culture anymore. I need to buy his Overmind. I'm going to go, I'm going to talk with the wife and see if I can't buy that uh, today. So, um, yeah, let me, let me see. I got to talk with the wife. Uh, Resistance Publishing, not a fan of Della Rose. Uh, I've been following his antics for about three years just to get to know who he is, and he comes off as a snake to me. I, you know what, man? I can't, um, I can't t t say any otherwise. I don't really know who the guy is at all. Um, you know, uh, and, and if that's how you feel, dude, I'll, I'll take you at your word on it. I don't know who he is. Um, I also did talk with Resistance Publishing. Um, 
And they even said, you know, they can kind of separate the art from the artist. So if I cover the stuff on the channel, they'll still be here for it. But yeah, no, some people like uh, Della Rose and some people don't. It's probably why I like some people like, you know, Ripa and some people don't. You know, I would say some people probably like me and some people probably don't. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, moving on the shadow finders, uh, one and two intro. I have a comment on here. Oh, it's faux peasy. Faux peasy says, what up? Yeah, that was just a short 23 second video that I released to show you guys just kind of a teaser to what I was going to do. And then our, I did not actually expect to release shadow binders volume one and two. But I did a poll. I was like, hey, should I release it today or Tuesday? Because I'm going to run into the Sunday before Labor Day and then, like, Labor Day itself. How do I do this? Um, I keep wanting to say Memorial Day. I don't know why, but Labor Day. Um, and overwhelmingly on the YouTube channel and even in uh, the Gilded server, everybody was like, nah, you should release that video today. And it's not tracking to do well. So if you guys come in and you share that video everywhere that you can... Um, and tell people that, you know, we're covering, you know, these brand new stories and what's going on. I think that will really help that video out. Um, ch -ch -ch -ch. All right. Uh, and this is the Shadowbinders Volume 1 and 2 story video. Uh, and we've got uh, Billy Bob. We only have two comments on this one. See, it's not doing well for some reason. It's been up for almost, you know, 18 hours and it's not doing well. So if you guys share that video and show people what we're doing with the Iron Age of comics. That would be fantastic. Uh, Billy Bob Sack says, good video, a drink with no balls. Yeah, he's giving me crap because I won't do a She-Hulk video. I, I will say this, I almost did a video on that twerking shit that She-Hulk did. Oh my God. I like, man, that one irritated the hell out of me. I just look at this and I'm like, I, I put on Twitter, I was like, you know what, women? I was like, women out there, stop the twerking. I was like, it's not sexy. It doesn't look sexy. I was like, it literally looks like you're just trying to shake a dingleberry out of your ass. Like, stop it. Stop. I don't understand. Like, why? Like, what? I, I don't know. I don't know. Makes no sense to me. Uh, Faux Peasy commented, I definitely like the panels. Yeah, man. Um, no, I think uh, Shadowbinders was an absolutely fantastic job. Wow, I was able to get through that rather quickly this week. Um, so that's good. Um, and also bad. I mean, it's good that I was able to get through it quickly, but also bad because that means that like nobody was really engaging in the channel. Oh boy, howdy. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder where I went to stray. Maybe it's because I didn't do a Lord of the Rings video this week. That's probably what it is. Honestly, yeah, that's and that's the one thing is like, you know, this last week I was just kind of covering stuff that I wanted to cover. And yeah, I'm always testing to see what, what works and what doesn't work. I got a huge boost from Clownfish TV with viewership on that one. You know what? Actually, maybe that's what I'll do because we did get the huge boost later. So let me go here and then I'll just read the comments on this video from the last seven days uh, because people have been commenting on that uh five days five days seven days i read that one already i haven't read this one have i no i have not okay uh Berkus games the parallel economy is taking off in new york people here are starting to learn what matters uh work for honest people not evil corpse yes thank you so much for Ver games <clears throat> um and this is the Clownfish TV doubles their goal in just days. So that was, uh, scroll down, that's right before reading your comments number six. Um, and like I said, the only reason I'm doing this one is because we got a huge boost from Clownfish TV after I did that reading the comments. So, um, AL, Clownfish sent me. Thank you so much. Yeah, they sent a lot of people here, man. I, this video got like 2,600 views, which is very, very good for my channel. Uh, caliber jacket. Um, it should be good considering Neon had uh, worked on Scrooge McDuck comics and also ran Shadowbinders beforehand. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking that Crimson Wren is going to be fantastic, and I really do hope that. Um, I I really like the Shadowbinders story. Um, and there's some stuff. Here's what's so cool: there are story elements that they're setting up slowly. There's story elements that are just like, bam, it's right here. There are relationships that are set up slowly. And then there are relationships that are just like, nah, this is just how it is. And so 
it's like on an individual bait and I kind of like that. Um, so yeah, I kind of like, uh, how they're the, the shadow binders was really fun and I really want to see shadow binders volume three now. Um, I almost wonder if they wouldn't make shadow binders volume three, like a really, really thick. Cause I read, I actually had time to sit down and read the second one yesterday after I got the, uh, the video out. Uh, because that is part of my work for YouTube now is sitting there reading the comic books. Which, and I didn't train myself. Uh, anyway, that's a different story. But yeah, no. Hopefully it's going to be really good. <clears throat> hopefully it's going to be really good. Jolly Roger, I wish they would do a trailer for Crimson Wren uh, like Rippa did for Isom. Yeah, man. Yeah. I, 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 Jolly Roger, I don't disagree. I wish they would. They do advertise it on every video that they're doing, though. So that's a good thing. And they are also dropping that they're, they're doing more, um, more shadow binders. So I am down with that. I'm absolutely down with that. Um, Clownfish TV sent me here. Says Orion Gear. Well, thank you so much, Orion Gear. And I do appreciate it. You'll usually, like I said, I don't go back any further than the previous weeks reading the comments. But that video took off in such a way that I felt that maybe I should do that. So that's pretty much all the comments that have happened in the last week. And outside of that, I just want to say thank you, every buddy for being here thank you so much for checking out the channel and engaging with me thank you for all those people who came over here from clownfish tv um i would strongly recommend everybody get in the gilded server because that's where we can have some fun have some fun conversations i can keep everybody updated uh on what's going on with the channel what i what i want to do how i want to do it and also where you guys can get notified about what i'm going to do you if you guys literally wanted to go in and turn all the channels off except for like no uh notifications on like a drink with crazy notifications that way you guys can always get a notification every time i do an upload um because as soon as i do the upload i take it over to gilded and post it in there so that's a good way for you guys if youtube notifications isn't working for you a good way for you guys to be able to handle uh, getting notifications. Um, in addition to that, I would like to say just thank you all so much for being here. I am going to continue to work as hard as I can on this channel to try to do uh, daily videos, daily uploads as much as humanly possible. Um, and I am, I, I actually have to get to work now uh, on doing the second chapter for Shadowbinders Volume 2 so I can have it ready for next Saturday. Uh, because that's going to start being a Saturday release because they're going to be released uh, every week. So make sure you guys are tuning into the channel on Saturdays specifically for that. Uh, I'm going to also have to read the um, the comic that I have from Jason De La Rose, which was the Sparkle something. I don't know. Uh, I should I'll probably release that one on like Tuesday and do a Jason De La Rose uh, comic on Tuesday. And then out uh, Monday, I will be coming up with a topic to talk about. And then I'll just be doing like the normal kind of like news topics and uh, talking about the things that are going on in like the pop culture world um, and things that are going on there. So uh, with all of that being said, everybody, and hopefully you guys are all down here for the premiere chat. Um, and but yeah, for everybody who's out there, who's checking out the channel and here for what I have to offer. Thank you so much. And I appreciate it. And I. I want, I want this to grow. I want this to grow. Like I cannot tell you how much I want this to grow and build this fan culture for all these fantastic artists that are, that are doing what they're doing. So thank you so much. And I will see you all next time right here on a drink with crazy. Cheers. everybody! Thank you for watching a drink with crazy. If you liked the conversation, make sure to click here to see more.